Hey everybody and welcome to another how to play video. In this video we're going to be covering Happy Little Dinosaurs, a game made by Unstable Games. They are the makers of other games such as Unstable Unicorns, Llamas Unleashed, and so on and so forth. Anyway, this game originally is a 2-4 to four player game, but if you have the exclusive edition, it's actually a 2-6 to a six player game once it focuses. There we go, thank you. Average time is 30 of 60 minutes and recommended ages uh, in 8 and up actually. But let's actually talk about how to play this game. So upon opening the box, you'll see a couple things. The first thing is the rules, which um, it, it might initially seem pretty lengthy, but to be honest, yeah, look at that. It looks pretty lengthy, but it's actually overall pretty simplistic. Uh, next thing on the list, you will see these boards. I will demonstrate that in just a little bit. And then there are the cards. So there's actually a lot of different types of, uh, or a a lot of different cards in total I should say but there are two different types of cards but you'll quickly see just how many cards there actually are here right now what I'm doing is taking them all out all right and we have your little meeples as well so I'll be going ahead and showing off a three-player game so I'm gonna need three of these meeples I'm gonna put the box over there for now but let me quickly show you uh, these different boards really fast so there's six of them. Each player is going to be getting one of them. So depending on the number of players that you choose to uh, play with, everyone wants one and then the extras actually get sent back into the box. So just a quick overview. There we go. All right. So let's say I have a three player game again. Okay. So I'm going to take this Cryoceratop. Obviously got to take the, you know, the, the marketing mascot. That's the one that they've been using to market the game. And I'll take, um, you know what, let's take this Raging Raptor. Sure which means that these three, I'm gonna be putting just back in the box, right there. So the last thing you wanna do is go ahead and uh, take these meeples, depending on which ones were picked. It's pretty easy to tell which ones because of the color of the dinosaur, but if I move that one there, you can see. So for example, the green one belongs to that one. That's the blue one, so it's the blue, uh, you know, raptor. And then we have the Cryceratops, which is the red one, right here. So yeah, that means these three, I'm also not gonna be using. Let me put the box aside right over here. All right, next thing on the list, you wanna make enough space for each um, for each player. Obviously, I'm a little confined in space here, but in normal circumstances, you would typically have a table and each player gets their own designated area. So it's gonna be a little complicated right now, but I will do my best to uh, make enough room. Each player is then gonna put their meeple on the start space, which is gonna be basically right here. It's a little tiny to see, but you do wanna make sure that you are putting the meeples on the start, not the one, but the start instead. The next thing in terms of the setup is you want to shuffle both of these piles. There are a lot of these types of cards. I actually went ahead and put card sleeves, which is why it looks a lot thicker. Each one does have, you know, it's a card sleeve basically. Um, but if you don't have them, it'll definitely look a lot smaller than this. It's just a card sleeve to make it thicker. But what you're going to do is shuffle all these. Shuffle them extensively and then shuffle the purple ones as well. Okay, both piles are shuffled. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, deal five cards to each player. So let's just do a sample hand here. One. That's two, three, four, and five. Once everyone has five cards, you're then just gonna put the deck somewhere over here on the side. I mean, if you're playing at the table, you can just put it in the middle, you know, and that should work too. Shuffle the purple cards. I already went ahead and shuffled these as well. Uh, and then just put these right there next to, you know, that deck right there. So this is the main deck and this is the disaster deck. So every single board is gonna have three different sections to it your actual dinosaur, and then your little pathway, as well as your disaster pile. It's important to know what is what as we begin the game, but overall that is the setup. Each player can then take a look at the cards in their hand. The goal of the game is for the first player to reach a score of 50, which would be right over here by going all the way through this little pathway, all the way until they get to win, or if they're the last player alive, meaning all other players have been eliminated. The game is composed of different rounds, and each round one card will be flipped up over here from the disaster pile face up so all players can see, and then players can take a look at their hand and play a card. So let's demonstrate. Let's assume we're playing and starting now. The very first thing I'll do is flip over one purple card, which is a disaster card. Now, the actual text and all the words and everything, technically speaking, that's not at all relevant to the actual gameplay of the game. So you could ignore that if you want, but it's nice to just see them some funny flavor text and humor, right? So it says, this feels personal. A small earthquake hits that seems to have happened only under you. You fall through a crack in the earth. Now, the important thing for gameplay purposes is the color. This is green. 
So it's important to know this. There's three different types of colors. There's green, there's blue, and there's red. So once a card gets flipped up, simply put it right there next to the face on disaster pile. And what's going to happen is that each player can then take a look at their hand. Let me demonstrate you a hand here. And they're going to be placing or playing one card face down. Now, most cards are actually going to be uh, numbered cards, as you can see. Uh, numbers range from zero all the way to nine. So each player does have to actually pick one number card, just one, and place it face down. So let's see, I actually have four options. I have one exclamation mark. These are instants, which I'll cover in just a little bit. But, um, you know, typically higher numbers win. Higher numbers are better. And some cards also have effects. For example, this card does not have an effect. It's a basic three. This one is a basic, um, basic six. Uh, this one is a zero, but it has an effect, which I'll get to effects in a little bit. And this one's a three with an effect. Let's actually start more simplistic with an example. So I will be playing this uh, six. So I'm choosing this one. I'm going to play it face down in the... Typically, it would be the center area, but I mean, obviously, we're a little tight in space here. So I'm just going to place it right here. All right, the second player's hand consists of this. As you can see, they have a lot of numbers. They have seven, fives, and nine. So you know what? This player is going to play a seven face down, okay? They're going to place it right there in the middle of the, um, of the entire table. And the third player's hand is this. This one has two instants and then uh, low numbers. Not a very good hand in terms of numbers, and none of them have effects. So they're forced to pick one of these, a one or a two. Well, you know, just pick the two, right? So they're going to place this one. Once every single player has placed a card face down, that's a numbered card specifically, cannot be an instant exclamation card, then we proceed to the next part. However, as a quick note, if a player does not have a single numbered card, it's lowly likely, but it is possible, meaning they have five exclamation marks, they have to reveal their cards to every other player so that they're not cheating, obviously, show proof that, oh, I don't have any, and then they simply shuffle their cards back into the deck, you know, shuffle a deck, and then draw five new ones. And they keep repeating that until they have at least one numbered card in their hand. Then they, of course, get to choose and then play it face down, and that's how that works. Okay, so moving back to this part, once everyone has placed a card face down, we then move on to the next part. Everybody's then going to reveal their card by flipping it up. So let's take a look. So everyone's now aware that this player has a 2, this one has a 7, and this one has a 6. So whoever has the highest number is actually going to win this round, and they will advance their little dinosaur meeple uh, that many spaces forward, equal to the score that they got. So for example, in the most simplistic sense, this one's a seven, this one one, right? Which means that you would move this up seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now this one is at seven. Only 43 more and this player wins the game. However, let's backtrack a little bit because it's not that simple. If the game was that simple, it'd be pretty boring to be honest. But there's a lot of things that also go into effect. Um, not just the card itself, but also certain card effects. Also the score of your actual dinosaur, the bonus, I'll talk about that in a bit, as well as instance. In order to know what exactly the score is, we need to look at the disaster card that was played face up. Again, this one's a green card. What does that mean? Every single dinosaur has a little valley over here, as you can see. Um, and this will actually show you what specific types of cards are going to give you pluses or minuses. So for example, the Raging Raptor, let me go ahead and put it a little closer just so you can see a little bit better gets a plus two for red, but a minus one for blue and green. A green card was played. So you know what that means? This player actually naturally loses one uh, score value, which means that instead of a six, they're actually a five. This one, it actually is a black. It's the only card that we have not seen yet because blacks are kind of like, they're essentially meteor cards, which I will cover one in just a little bit. But because it's not a green, it doesn't get plus or minus, so it stays neutral. It's at zero, basically, so that's still a seven. And then the Criceratops is a plus one for blue, minus one for green. What does this mean? It's a green, so it's actually two. Oh, poor Criceratops players, seriously. Now they're at one. So it's a one, a seven, and a five. So this does still mean that the Stego would actually end up winning this round, right? Because there's still a seven, so they get to advance seven. Well, the other thing is that you can also use your card effects, however there's none, so we'll skip that in round. I purposely chose no card effect for this first round demonstration. However, the last thing that can happen is actually the use of instant cards. So let's take a look at uh, this player over here, you know, who's definitely down in the dumps right now. Uh, let's take a look at instant. So not these two, but there are a couple here. The first one is the helping hand. It says, play this card during scoring. Discard any number of point cards with a value of 1, 2, or 3 from your hand, then add the point value of the discarded cards to your score this round. 
So what does this mean? Value one, two, or three. This player could discard these two and add three, but it still wouldn't work because they're only at a one. That's unfortunate. However, there's also this one, score inversion. This one says, play this card during scoring. Switch the score of the highest scoring player with the score of the lowest scoring player after scores have been calculated. Okay, so now that we know the scores here, you know what, this player's gonna play score inversion. It's a one, that's a seven. So the player plays score inversion, sends it to the discard pile, which would actually go right here. Sorry about that, I'm gonna go right there. And now this one's actually a seven, and this one's actually a one. Okay, so that means that this player is actually gonna advance seven. But wait, does this player have um, a rebuttal? Because they can, it's still, you know, it's still the phase of playing instant cards. They actually don't. They have all number cards, remember? So they're actually kind of screwed. And then this player can try to do something too, but they don't actually have any. They have a natural insurance card, but that one is a little bit different. I'll explain the next phase first. So let's just say it resolves like this, okay? Which means that this player is actually gonna be advancing seven. Okay, so that's the first player. The person that gets first place in that round moves that many spaces. Other players do not move spaces, they stay put. However, the person that got last place in that round gets a punishment. This disaster card actually gets added into their disaster pile. Remember that these cards shouldn't actually be here. I'm just doing it for space purposes. So let's just put them over here. Let's say they were there. This card would actually go into their disaster pile. It has bonuses, but also bad effects. Bonuses means that moving forward every single round, um, this player would actually be able to advance one space for each card in their disaster pile. So what does this mean? This means that let's say in round two, let's just uh, you know move forward hypothetically. In round two, this player once again doesn't win, okay? They actually get to advance one space because they have one card in their, in their natural pile. So it's kind of a way of a comeback, you know, hey, you got last place, you get this disaster pile. It's a little bit of a comeback factor, you know, to try to be a little bit better next round in the following rounds because you have a tiny bit of advantage. That's the good side of things, but there's also a bad side of things. If any player gets either three of the same colored disaster card, meaning, for example, in this case, three green, so two more green, they are actually out of the game completely. They discard their hand, they're eliminated, now it's only a two-player game. If one other player gets eliminated from these two, then the other player wins because, hey, that's one of the win conditions. You either are the last player to, you know, stay alive, or you make it to 50 of the score first. However, the other way you can get eliminated too is if you actually get one disaster card of each of the three different colors. Let me actually show you the disaster pile just so you are aware of what exactly can be found lurking here. Here's a red one. So let's say this player has that one, that one, and that one in their disaster pile. Naturally, you would want to um, organize it like this. That way everybody can see the ones that you already have. All you have to do is look at the side color and you can just you know keep putting more and more. So if this player got that, they're out. They got one disaster card of each of the three different colors in the game, so they're eliminated. That's it. Or once again, three of the same color also gets you eliminated. However, moving back to the um, disaster pile, the other card that I want to show you is the Meteor. The Meteor is a crazy card. It says, this card acts as any type of disaster card, meaning that if this card gets flipped up on a round, you know, and it's the card that's here, guess what that means? This means that this does actually act as everything. Yes, literally everything. So if you actually were to take this card by getting last place in your round, this card acts as, acts as one of everything. So if you get two more greens or two more reds or two more blues, you're out. Or if you then get one green and one red, you're out because this one counts as the blue too. It's a very dangerous card to have because it counts as everything. The last card in the disaster pile is a mini meteor. If I can find one here real quick. These are regular meteors. But here's the mini meteor. Mini meteors um, act as two of the three. So here's a little, quick little showcase. This card acts as either blue, red, blue or red. So not green, but it can act as blue or red. Same rules apply, you know, if you have two other reds plus a mini meteor, you're out because that one counts as red and so on. And that's basically how the game works. You keep playing round by round. At the end of every single round, um, all the cards that were played are then going, are then going to the uh, discard pile right here face up and then players draw cards up until they have five cards in their hand. This is really important to know, because if you know that you are gonna draw until you have five cards in your hand, that means that you should play as many cards as possible, as many instants as you can. If you play like four instants, you get to draw that many cards, you know, before the next round begins, which is great. All right, now the complicated part is ties. Let's go back a little bit. 
Let's say that in any round, uh, two players were tied with the same highest score. Let's say this player uh, played a six, played a six, and after everything, let's say, you know, after all the instincts, after the dinosaur value, and then the card here, it was a six. Six for this, six for this, but they both got first place. Both players actually get those points, which means that this one would move up to six, and this one would move up to six, and that's it. However, if all three players, or all players, but in this case, all three players, get a six tied for first, no players get points because it'd be kind of redundant, you know, to just advance everybody the same. So nope, nobody gets any points. Everyone stays put. So that's on the highest score end, but what about the lowest end? On the lowest end, it works a little bit differently. If two or more players tie for the lowest score, it's a little more complicated because you can't just award the last place to both players because you have to give this card to one player. You can't just give it to two players, you know, that's not how that works. Only one player can get it. The way that you do this is you do a sudden death match between those players. Essentially the way it works is you look at your hand and you play a card face down. Let's say a three. And then let's say this player takes a look at their hand. They're like, hmm, I'm gonna play a five, you know? Okay, then they flip it. They flip it face up and they see their values. The person with the lowest score from this sudden death match ends up taking that uh, disaster card to their pile, unfortunately. However, during sudden death, there's a big rule here. You cannot apply any other bonuses at all, meaning your dinosaur bonus does not work, your instance bonus do not work, and your effects of these cards do not work either if they had effects. These two don't. So basically, nothing works during sudden death. Only the number is applied, and that's it. Once these cards are used in sudden death, again, you put this card to the loser, and then you put the sudden death cards into the discard pile, and there we go. However, what if there is a tie between both players in sudden death? This works a little bit differently. The way that this works, let's say that this was back here, five and five, it's a tie. What happens? Players continuously keep doing this. So now they're gonna look at their hand again and play another card. Oh, I got a nine. I'm gonna play this face down right here. And then you over here, you have a, well, a three. They flip them and obviously this player lost, of course. So you keep doing that over and over again until there's actually a winner and a loser. What if a player doesn't have any more cards left in their hand during sudden death? Well, it works a little bit differently during sudden death. In normal circumstances for the regular round, again, you dis you show your hand, you discard your hand, and then you draw five, and then you get to play a card face down. That's during the normal round. During sudden death, it doesn't work that way. The game's a lot more punishing. The way that it works, let's say you didn't have any more, and this was your last card. You don't have any more, so you actually are done for. Um, you can't play a card, so you are gonna be the one that gets a natural disaster. So if you don't have any score cards at all during sudden death, you are screwed. Now. In the very rare circumstance in which both players do not have a scorecard at the same round, they both ran out, what happens? This card actually just gets shuffled under the deck, and then the game literally says, nobody talk about it ever again. <laughs> just to avoid that awkwardness, okay? <laughs> it's pretty funny, but that's how that works. So, it'll, that'll almost never happen. Very low chance of this card ever not going to someone's, you know, play area. But it is possible, just to let you know. I think that about covers the majority of the rules. Once again, you just keep playing round by round until you know there's a winner uh, by the one, one of the two different win conditions. The very last thing I would do is just show you a couple of effects because again, some cards do actually have effects. Uh, not instants, you kind of already know about instants. During instants, you know, when scores have been made, you get to play an instant, then another player gets to play an instant. There's really no particular order on that. However, for effects, there is one thing I want to mention really quick. For example, Let's show this one. It says, you may look at the top two cards in your deck. Choose a card and add it to your hand. Discard the other card. So, basically, that means when it gets flipped up, you know, during the that reveal part, uh, you get to then play the effect of it if you want to. Um, so, if this player wants to do it, they just go ahead and proceed by using the effect. However, if multiple effects can play at the same time, you actually start with the lowest uh, number first. So, if somebody has a card with like a 5 and somebody with a 7, uh, the person with the 5 gets to activate their effect first, and then the person with the 7 gets to activate their effect after that. However, if two players play a card with the same value that both have an effect, because there is no lower value, you can't just say, oh, the lowest one, right? The way that that works is a player who's actually more far behind on the board gets to go first. So if, let's say these two, you know, they both played 5. 5-5 five, five, and they both have an effect, but this one's at a 4 and this one's at a 2. The one that's on the 2 actually gets to go first because they're more behind to the victory condition. Let's say that in the very rare circumstance, they are both in the same exact uh, spot as well as the same value and an effect. What happens? The youngest player actually goes first. That's literally what the game says, the youngest player. So whoever's younger 
by year, if it's the same year, then by month, by day, that person gets to go first. So let's say in the incredibly rare chance that people were born on the same day. What happens? I have no clue. The game does not mention that at all, so I don't know what's gonna happen. Y'all gotta do something, like roll a die or whatever, I don't know. But it doesn't say what to do about that. And that's basically it for the game. The game is overall pretty simplistic once you get the gist of it. The only complicated part is the whole ties thing. When there's ties, you sometimes have to look at the rulebook again because there's a lot of circumstances like, wait a minute, what happens with this or that? Uh, but yeah, just, um, you know, as long as you're following the rules and you know what to do, and it's actually going to be a pretty simplistic and very enjoyable game. So hopefully you enjoyed this video about how to play Happy Little Dinosaurs. And lastly, before I end the video, I do want to give you a quick reminder to not forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and turn on those notifications. Bye-bye, everyone. Have a great day.